Alrighty, welcome to the introduction to Terminal API. Awesome to have you here today. I'm Bobby Lee, a developer advocate here at Square. And with me today is Gabe, who is the product manager for Terminal API. Gabe is first going to go over what the Terminal API is and its value add, and then he'll show some awesome customer use cases. Then I'll take it from him and run a short tutorial on how to use it. So I'll hand it over to Gabe. Thank you, Bobby Lee. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, before I talk about what Terminal API is, let me start by talking about what Square Terminal is. A Square Terminal is a portable all-in-one device that accepts cards via swipe or dip. And for contact pay contactless payments, you can also tap a card or a mobile device like a, like a phone or, or, or a watch. Uh, Square Terminal has an intuitive touchscreen display, has a built-in thermal printer, so you don't even need any ink to print receipts. It can connect to the internet via either built-in Wi-Fi or also um, via Ethernet. And it can be connected directly to power or used uh, cordlessly with a battery that lasts all day. So it's an extremely flexible, uh, easy to use and adaptable device. Uh, Square Terminal is secure and reliable and brings Square's payment processing capabilities to a sleek new form factor. So this includes things like easy onboarding for sellers, fair and transparent pricing, really fast deposits, and also important things like PCI and EMV compliance, end-to-end -end encryption, fraud and dispute management, and more. Square Terminal is available in the US, the UK, Australia, Canada, and Japan. So what is Terminal API? Terminal API lets your own app connect to Square Terminal to initiate a payment. Uh, since the payment request is made from a server via a RESTful API call, you can initiate the payment from any interconnected, in, internet connected device. This means that you can integrate Terminal API to any point of sale system, whether it's a web-based point of sale, desktop based or mobile. It really doesn't matter as long as your uh, point of sale system can talk to the internet, you can integrate easily with Terminal API. Once you send a payment request to the terminal, it'll prompt the buyer to pay. And once the buyer completes the checkout flow on the terminal, we'll notify you via webhook that the payment is complete so that you can close the sale on your side. So Terminal API makes integration really easy for developers and it makes reconciliation a breeze for sellers. Since we launched Terminal API at Square and Box last year, more than 50 partners have signed up to build an integration. And these are some of the ones that have launched in our app marketplace. They include healthcare solutions, such as Jane, ECDERM, and Remedly, uh, self-service kiosks for restaurants like moby to go and Flash Order, and even ERP and CRM solutions like Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. So to go deeper into one of these use cases, uh, Jane is a global clinic management solution that enables clinicians to book, chart, schedule, schedule and invoice for services. Their customers previously used a sidecar legacy payment device, requiring clinicians to manually enter payment information into the terminal and then back again into the Jane app to mark the service as paid. Jane used Terminal API to offer a more integrated in-person payment processing experience to their customers, which enabled safe contactless payments and saved valuable time. In fact, uh, one clinic we spoke to said that switching to an integrated payment solution has saved them more than between 30 and 45 minutes per day that they would otherwise spend doing reconciliation. So it's been a really great experience for, for, for their sellers. Uh, another interesting use case, which is more about enabling new experiences, not just integrating payments into existing solutions. Uh, moby to go integrated Terminal API uh, to help build a self-service kiosk, which improves in-store wait times and the checkout experience at quick service restaurants in Australia. Customers can use the kiosk to browse a restaurant's menu, choose menu items, and then pay for the order. Before moby to go could roll out their kiosk, they needed a reliable way to accept and process payments. So the team turned to Square to access Square Terminal API, which, as I mentioned, can integrate with any solution as long as it's connected to the network. With this integration, moby to go could enable restaurants to offer an exceptional customer experience and consolidate multi-channel payment data within the existing point of sale system of their clients. So these are only a few of the examples of what developers are building using Terminal API. Uh, and next, Bobby Lee will show you how you can integrate Terminal API into whatever you're building. Thank you. Thanks, Gabe. Okay, awesome, tutorial time. So I'm gonna show you how to get started with integrating Terminal API by connecting the terminal to your own account. This first step, the first step I'll go over webhooks 
This allows us to see events that happen as we move throughout the entire terminal API flow. Next, we'll connect a terminal device using the devices API. And finally, we'll create a checkout on our connected terminal and verify processing a payment. So let's jump into the first step of setting up our webhooks. We're going to use webhook.site to set up a webhook URL to easily see these events. These events we care about are device paired and the payment events. So let's go ahead and copy that URL to our clipboard. Then we'll go into our Square Developer Dashboard to the webhook section of our app and click Add Endpoint. Let's name this endpoint Terminal Webhook. And for the URL, I'm going to paste in the link from the webhook.site I just copied. Then we'll update the API version to the latest if it's not already set. Let's set the webhook events now. So I'm going to select device.code.paired, terminal.checkout.created, and terminal.checkout.updated. And now the endpoint is ready to be saved. Now I'll go ahead and show a test event. So we'll click terminal webhook to pull open the, our endpoint details on the right. Then click more and then send test event. And in this pop-up, we'll select a device a device code paired event. Let's switch back to webhook.site to see what happened. In the left side pane, we can see the events are sending, and it looks just like the data that showed up on our Square Developer Dashboard. Now that we have our webhook set up, I'll show you how to connect the terminal device using the device's API with something called a device code. Here in my terminal, I have a curl command prepped for making a call to the device's API. We are showing all of the available fields that we can set, but the only two fields that are required are product type and item potency key. But the name field is what will show up in a seller's dashboard for that device. So you'll wanna be sure to put something recognizable here, but again, this field's optional. Also, if you omit the location field, it will automatically default to the main location for the seller account that the request is being made for. So it's important to explicitly set this if you know which location it should be associated with or you have multiple locations. Then you can see I already ran it. So in the response, you'll see a code field generated for us and we're gonna send that now to the terminal device. So click sign in on the terminal, then tap use code device. Enter the code I just sent over from the command line curl request. And as it logs in, you'll see it load up the terminal app. Perfect. So now we have successfully logged into the terminal device. So let's take a look at what webhook happened, what webhook events just happened. So there are a few new events triggered by our login that shows the device code paired event happened. And in the data section of our event, we have a device ID set. This is our device ID that we will use to refer to the terminal device we just connected to. So let's go ahead and copy that and then we'll set it in our environment of our command line terminal. Awesome, so now we have our device ID set and now we can create a checkout. So I prepped the same curl command that we used in the beginning of the tutorial. So what you're looking at is the bare minimum now to create a checkout. I went ahead and ran it and we can see our checkout response. So now let's take a look at the terminal device again. We see that the device is waiting for a payment. So just tap your card and a payment has now been processed. So now to verify this, let's quickly go back and look at our webhook events. So we have a few new events here. One for the new checkout that was created. Another for our checkout updating to a pending state. And finally, one when our checkout is completed. So we can see here in the last event that there is a payment ID in the payment IDs array. If we wanted to, we could just use the Payments API to go and look up this payment. So awesome, that about covers everything for getting started with Terminal API. We first set up our webhooks, then we created a device code using the Devices API, and then we created a checkout using the Terminal API. Although I use curl commands to trigger the checkout response today, we also have SDKs that you can use to integrate into your own application. So alrighty, folks, we'll stick around to go over any questions you may have. Um, if not, take a break before the next session starts.
question that came in, is there latency when requesting ID, IDs, like querying the payments after receiving the webhook? There is, uh, the, the requests are going over the internet, so there is a little bit of latency uh, as the request is going over, over the cloud. Uh, you know, we've done as, uh, all we can in our end to optimize how fast everything happens, including being smart about polling on the terminal, uh, sending requests back as soon as uh, the payment is complete, um, even before the, you know, the, the checkout is completely done, we're starting to upload payment information back to our server. So we've done a lot of work to make it as responsive as possible, uh, but ultimately your internet connection will have some effect on the overall on the overall latency. He also just asked me, you have a stale cache. So what was the question again? Yeah, may you have a stale cache? I'm not sure what that means. Like your ID, you said like your ID returns a 404. When you're logging in or when you, I mean, look sure. Jean, do you mean when you're logging in or what do you mean by that? Like when querying your payment ID? Yeah, so the way it works is you start it, you create a checkout object. Uh, when you first create a payment, request, we actually create a checkout object, which is a state that's managing the state on the terminal. So that's one object that exists even before the payment is created. Uh, it's created as soon as you make the initial request. And then it has a series of states. Uh, so it starts pending while the buyer hasn't yet, you know, presented their card. And then as soon as the, the payment is completed, the state of the checkout changes to completed and a payment ID is attached to the checkout. And then the payment ID is your permanent record. So you have this um, you know, intermediate object that represents the state of the checkout request on the terminal that you can always reference its state. Um, and then once it's completed, you'll, you'll have the payment ID uh, for future use. I see in the Q&A, a question around is mm -hmm. the terminal uh, PCI compliant and is the server that sends a request for the terminal and scope for PCI. Uh, yeah, this, the terminal is PCI compliant and, and the server that sends the request is, is not in scope uh, because the server is not touching any, any payment data. You're just sending an amount to the terminal that you want to uh, collect. And then the terminal handles the payment, uh, talks to score servers, and you only receive the payment identifier once we're done. So uh, your server, your point of sale solution, your front and your server is completely out of scope for, for PCI. I think that's it for questions so far that are coming in. We have a minute, we could go over maybe uh, one of the sample questions we put up. So which payment methods can you accept with Square Terminal? Sure, so you can accept uh, credit and debit cards and that's both you know, uh, swipe, dip, and also tap, you know, contactless, Apple Pay, Google Pay. Uh, you can also manually enter uh, a credit card payment. So there's a different variation of the request that'll pop on a, a screen to manually enter the, the payment. Uh, in Canada, you can accept Interact debit cards and also initiate a uh, Interact uh, refund flow in the terminal because in Canada, um, you need to actually present the card to, to issue a refund. So there's a flow for that as well. And, and in Japan, we support uh, some common uh, Felica or e-money uh, payment methods as well. Um, so definitely a, a variety of payment methods to, to make sure that in whatever country that you're, you're building your solution, you can accept you know, whatever comes across the counter. Um, I just a quick answer to this one. Can you use Square Terminal and Terminal API in Sandbox environment? And yes. Um, yeah, so the, the terminal itself doesn't connect to Sandbox. Uh, the terminals work only in production, but we do have a, a Sandbox environment for Terminal API and a set of test cases that you can trigger from your server that basically simulate the responses on the terminal. So you could set a parameter you know, to simulate a payment that is completed by the buyer, simulate a payment that is canceled by the buyer, simulate a payment that times out, and you can actually see end-to-end -end, you know, if your server you know, issue the request on your server, see the response on the API, see the eventual webhook that gets generated. Uh, so you can do a lot of those types of, of test cases in Sandbox. Uh, I also see a question, uh, can you customize the welcome screen to add custom branding and display a different message other than ready to take payment? Uh, not today, the idle screen uh, is out of the box, uh, but it's something that we, we want to do um, and let you customize the look and feel, uh, you know, business name, logos, et cetera. I think we're about out of time. Um, but thank you so much. You can keep answering and asking questions in our lounge after our session today. Um, it was awesome talking to you guys and thanks. <laughs>